guys, it's Vanessa from Unmasked. I wanted to bring you a story that I've been closely following since Sunday, September 12th. I posted about it in my Patreon, but I wanted to hold off on making a video until I could vet all of the information that had come out and make sure that we had all information available to the public at this time. So 22-year-old Gabby Petito was reported missing by her parents on September 11th at approximately 6.55 p.m., but there seems to be a lot more to this story. Gabby is originally from Blue Point, New York in Suffolk County, but moved down to Northport, Florida about two years ago with her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. They converted her 2012 Ford van into a camper and decided to travel across the country and vlog their van lifer lifestyle. After attending Gabby's brother's graduation in New York on June 17th, they left on their trip from New York on July 2nd. The two frequently posted on their Instagram accounts and also kept in regular contact with Gabby's family. They also have a YouTube channel called Nomadic Static, which has one video that was uploaded on August 19th, but the footage in the video, a lot of it is from a year ago, and then there's some that looks like it's from this trip in July and early August. If you aren't familiar with the van life community, it's converting your vehicle into at least a part-time home. It usually has a bed, solar panels, a sink, storage, gray water system, and your basic amenities like that. It's a nomadic, minimalistic lifestyle and community. Some people do it full-time, some people do it part-time. Many of them blog about their trips and start YouTube channels to make some money. This is what Brian and Gabby were obviously in the process of doing as well. So here is a timeline and rundown of the facts that we have so far regarding Gabby and Brian's trip and her subsequent disappearance. On July 2nd, Gabby Petito and her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie, leave from New York and head west for a cross-country trip. Gabby and Brian have been engaged since summer of 2020. It is worth noting that her family refers to Brian as her boyfriend and not her fiance. So whatever that's about, I'm not quite sure. It could be because the engagement was called off during the trip. It could just be because of the current circumstances and how they're feeling. I just thought it was interesting. On July 5th, they first headed west through Kansas and stopped at the Monument Rocks. By July 8th, they were in Colorado Springs, and then on the 10th, they stopped at the Great Sand Dunes National Park. On July 16th, Gabby posted a photo of herself from Zion Park in Utah. On July 20th, Gabby posted that they were at Cedar Breaks, and on the 21st, they were at Bryce Canyon National Park. Gabby's mother said that she was in contact with her family at least three times a week, despite their remote locations. On July 23rd, Brian has an interesting post where he tags Gabby and says, thank you for putting up with me in Utah, a topographic playground. On July 26th, Gabby posted a beautiful photo of herself relaxing in an outdoor tub at Mystic Hot Springs. On July 29th, Brian posts about barefoot hiking from Canyonlands National Park. Something I noticed is that Gabby has liked all of his posts up to this point. After this post, she doesn't like any of the rest of them. On July 30th and the 31st, they stop at the Mesa Arch in the Canyonlands National Park. Gabby posts both of these days, Brian does not post. So they've been posting pretty consistently throughout their trip. You can see that there's a large gap in their social media posts from July 31st to August 12th. Now, is that indicative of some problems or is that just because of their spotty Wi-Fi and cell reception? We're not sure, but in my opinion, August 12th is where things get weird. On this day, they took a hike at Arches National Park in Moab, Utah. 
there is someone that is stating that there was some type of fight or altercation between the two on the 12th. I can't say if that's 100% fact at this point, but it is screenshotted in all over the Facebook groups. I did see where that came from, and it seems like a fairly reliable source. Another weird thing is that Gabby does have a post on August 12th and they are kissing in the picture, but it seems the caption underneath it seems much longer and written in a different style than her previous posts. If you go to her account, you'll see that there are a lot of comments of people feeling the same way. REI is tagged in the post and it just has an awkward feel to it. It doesn't read like the rest of her Instagram posts. REI actually does comment under this post after they're tagged and the whole post just has a strange feel. All you have to do is go read the comments and a lot of people are convinced that that was not her that wrote it. They were still in Moab on August 13th, according to Brian's social media, and August 13th is interestingly his last post. That seems kind of strange since the trip went another 12 days, which leads me back to the timeline that was posted to social media yesterday by one of Gabby's family members. The timeline, which was posted by a family member, reads that Brian returned to Florida on August 17th and came back on the 23rd. After hearing the police refer to the van as her van yesterday, I wonder if he flew back to Florida on the 17th and then they possibly made up somehow and then he flew back on the 23rd. In my opinion, it would be very odd if this timeline and these notes were posted and they meant nothing. There is a post on August 19th on Gabby's Instagram, but some people online are saying that the pic is older and on one of her stories. The YouTube video was also uploaded to their channel on August 19th. However, neither one of those things necessarily proves that they were together on that date. On August 21st, it was reported that Gabby's father, Joseph Petito, had food sent to Gabby via Uber Eats and that she was in Salt Lake City without power due to a storm. This would also fit with Brian being gone unless she just checked into a hotel to take a shower and get out of the bad weather. It would also make sense as to why she was in a hotel in Salt Lake City for several days. I'm just gathering that based on the fact that they were able to get Uber Eats to deliver. The timeline reads that Brian came back on the 23rd, which would fit with them checking out of a Salt Lake City hotel on August 24th, as her family has reported. This was the last time that Gabby was physically seen. Her parents stated in multiple interviews the past two days that Gabby and Brian decided to go to Wyoming to avoid some heavy wildfire smoke in the area. August 25th was Gabby's last post on Instagram. This post has also been the subject of a lot of speculation. It has the caption, Happy Halloween. I don't know if that's because of all of the black and orange, but her clothes do seem out of place from the rest of the trip. Now they did just check out of a hotel the day before, so maybe she did take that opportunity to take a shower and put on nicer clothes, or is that possibly an older picture? In the post, she's at the Monarch Wall in Ogden, Utah, which is north of Salt Lake City and would be on the way to Wyoming. Gabby FaceTimed her mom on the 25th. It is reported that Gabby may have indicated to her mom that she and Brian were having a rocky patch and that she was unsure of their relationship, but she did clarify that she did sound happy and Gabby stated that they were currently headed to the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. This would be the last time anyone spoke to Gabby. It is reported that their van was spotted at Grand Teton National Park on the 25th. On August 27th, it's been reported that through Gabby's Snapchat account, she told one of her friends that she was headed to Yellowstone. However, there was no voice to voice and no way to prove it was from Gabby herself. After August 27th, her social media went completely dark. Then on August 30th, her family received a text from Gabby's phone that allegedly read no service in Yosemite. However, again, there was no way to confirm it was actually from her. After not hearing from Gabby for some time and not being able to reach her, her family became very concerned and reported her missing to the police. 
The van was spotted at his family's home in Northport, Florida, and it was discovered that Brian had returned without Gabby. We were contacted over the weekend to, uh, if we could assist with uh, looking at a residence in Northport and potentially uh, trying to figure out where Gabby's at. Uh, so we uh, made contact with her boyfriend. Uh, actually, I take that back. We made contact with the parents of her boyfriend in Northport and uh, were able to locate her vehicle. Uh, we subsequently took that vehicle and uh, it is currently in our possession. We're processing it for any potential evidence. Uh, we have attempted to uh, speak with Brian. Um, so far, his family has given us the uh, name and phone number of their attorney. Obviously, investigators will have to sort through a lot of digital forensics with locations of cell phone pings, cameras at the parks, and possibly even other people's photos that may have been in the same areas. I also wanted to mention their Spotify account. There has been some talk about this online as well, and yesterday when my team and I were digging around, we found on their YouTube channel that they have multiple links to their other social media platforms. We looked at their Spotify account that they had linked and saw some potentially interesting insights into their relationship considering that she has now disappeared. There are 12 playlists on their account. The playlists that say Made by Gabby don't have any songs added to them after August 23rd. We know that the last visual of her was the 24th and the last voice contact was the 25th. The last few songs that were added to the playlist were depressing breakup songs and songs about loneliness. There are two playlists that say made by Brian and those have a bunch of songs added on August 30th and August 31st. There's a playlist made by Brian called Self Consumption that was made on August 30th after Gabby had disappeared. Those dates are interesting considering that August 30th is the date that Gabby's mom received the last text from Gabby's phone. It also seems that Gabby is pretty active on her Spotify, so even that goes silent after the 23rd. There are currently three law enforcement agencies investigating Gabby's mysterious disappearance. The Suffolk County PD in New York, the Northport, Florida PD, and now the Tampa FBI field office are all involved in the search for Gabby. Watching the interview with Gabby's parents yesterday was absolutely heartbreaking. Of course, we all see the red flags, but we also hope that there's a chance that Gabby can be found safe and back with her family. Is it possible that they got into a fight and he left her stranded somewhere without cell service? Anything is possible. In the latest news today, the New York Post was able to snap a photo of the police leaving a pink slip at Brian Laundrie's home. They state that they are open to the idea now that something sinister has happened to Gabby. It should come as no surprise that as of today, the Northport, Florida Police Department has named Gabby's boyfriend, Brian, as a person of interest in her disappearance. Gabby's family is understandably distraught and angry, and they are demanding that Brian give them information on where their daughter is. Wink News out of Northport was able to get a hold of Brian Laundrie's attorney, Steve Bertolino. He did give a statement, I'm paraphrasing, that basically said that they are aware that there is a search commencing in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming and that their hopes are that Miss Petito can be reunited with her family. How thoughtful. It's just coming in on me. Me and Brian just got up and got ready, made the bed in the tent, set up. Um, I think our plan for today is to just hang out here in the tent. Um, Brian's stretching, doing some morning yoga. Of 
All the chocolate so mouth it. Melted. I know, it's a river of chocolate. <laughs> Be you can't keep chocolate in Utah. Despite everything else going on, the family wants to stay focused on getting Gabby's face out there to help find her. Gabby is five foot five and approximately 110 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. She has the phrase, let it be tattooed on her right arm and a triangle with flowers on her left arm. I have seen a few people in Facebook groups saying that they did meet them while they were camping and exchanging stories of their various interactions with them. If you came across Gabby and Brian at all during their trip, or if you've seen anything at all that you think can help with the investigation, please contact 1-800-CALL-FBI or submit your tip to tips.fbi.gov. We will keep you updated with anything new regarding her disappearance. Until then, our thoughts are with her family. Gabby's keto never goes outside. <laughs>